This is gonna be a very concise 15 minute lecture on chemical ventilation. I'm Greg Staff Educator for Respiratory. Um, so let's dive right into it. Um, there's two main modes that you'll see here on this unit. You'll see the assist control mode, okay? And then the pressure support or weaning kind of mode. So the assist control mode, um, that's where every single breath that the patient is getting is a ventilator generated breath, okay? So um, we're talking about the four main settings that you'll see in that mode. So you can see right here, assist control um, is the, the mode. There's four parameters that makes assist control work. You're gonna have the set respiratory rate. Okay, and here I've got it set at 16 breaths a minute. So no matter what, minimum, that patient's gonna receive 16 breaths a minute all the time. They are able to breathe over it if they are spontaneously breathing, but minimum they're gonna get 16 breaths a minute. The next thing I've got set is the tidal volume. So here it's 420 cc's of tidal volume, and that is how much air gets pushed into the lungs by the ventilator every breath that the ventilator gives. So 16 breaths a minute, they're gonna get 420 cc's of air pushed into their lungs to ventilate, okay? The next thing that we come to is the oxygen level. I have it set here for 100% oxygen. Uh, we can set that anywhere between room air and 100%. And then PEEP. PEEP is positive end expiratory pressure. Uh, we all walk around right now with about five of PEEP. That's physiologic. So normally you'll see at least five of PEEP set for the patients. Okay. So when you're giving a report to the next shift, when the doctor comes in and asks what settings they're on, um, you simply look down here in this section and you can say, okay, they're on assist control, rate of 16, tidal volume 420, 100% oxygen, and five of PEEP. Those are the only four parameters you really have to report on. Everything else we do for some patient synchrony and comfort, uh, but those are the bit settings, okay? Um, so I'm gonna activate the, the test lung here, and it'll start ventilating for the patient. Up here, you'll see these numbers. This is what the patient parameters actually are. Okay, um, so there's a couple things I'll point out to you for the, the patient parameters to be aware of. First thing is the breaths per minute. I told you that we're doing 16 breaths a minute, no matter what. If the patient's totally passive, totally sedated, they're minimum gonna get 16 breaths a minute. Well, up here is the total breaths per minute that the patient's doing. So if they're breathing on their own above the ventilator, that number will change. And that's a good number to track and, and pass on a report as well. Uh, you can say that the patient was on a rate of 16. However, most of this shift, they've been breathing in the mid 20s. Right. And then um, as you track that, if, if you notice a patient maybe getting anxious or um, they're feverish, different things that could cause the respiratory rate to increase. If you look at that during your shift, uh, they started out at low 20s, but then mid-shift, they're breathing 40 breaths a minute. Well, that's some kind of change, so that may be something we need to investigate more. Okay, but it's set at 16 breaths a minute. They're breathing about 20 breaths a minute now. Every breath that they take, whether it's a 16 scheduled one, or a breath that they breathe over, every breath they're getting 420 cc's of tidal volume pushed in, okay? Uh, the other number that I would point out to you on this patient parameter screen is the peak pressure, okay? Peak pressure is how much pressure the ventilator is requiring to push in that 420 cc's of tidal volume. Okay, and we have to monitor that pressure because we don't want it to get too high and we can cause a pneumothorax. So we would watch the peak pressure and there's something that always drives up the peak pressure, it's very common, and that would be secretions. So if there's a lot of secretions, the ventilator is gonna require more pressure to deliver that 420 cc's of tidal volume because it has to get past the secretions. 
Well, the easiest way to alleviate that is through suctioning, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but if the pressure gets too high, um, it will pressure limit and alarm, and uh, suctioning would be the easiest thing that would get that peak pressure back down. Okay. So, um, just as a review, this patient is on a cyst control rate of 16, tidal volume 420, 100%, and 5 of peak. Okay, so let's talk about some alarms. Um, there are three types of alarms here. There's a low priority, medium priority, and high priority alarm. So um, I'm gonna get just a low priority alarm going here. I'm gonna ventilate over my set limit. And you're gonna hear uh, a beep, and it's going to just one beep like that. That's an information type of alarm, a low priority alarm, um, it was just saying, oh, something happened outside of my alarm parameters, okay? It's more just for information. Um, but a low priority alarm like that can turn into a high priority alarm, I'm um, sorry, a medium priority alarm. And a medium priority alarm is three beeps intermittently. So it'll beep, three beeps, and then it will um, silence for a little bit and beep three beeps some more. Okay, I'll, I'll get that uh, as a demonstration here. Whenever you get, get an alarm uh, notification, low and medium priority alarms will be yellow. There was the three beeps right there, if you heard that, okay? So um, low and medium will be yellow. If they progress to a high priority alarm, this will turn red and it'll be red here as well, okay? This ventilator is nice. It tells you what kind of alarm it is and even what to do with it. You notice here, there's a yellow tab. So it's telling you what's going on. So this case, last two mandatory breaths, uh, the pressure was greater than the maximal allowed level of pressure. Um, and then it was saying check the patient. So that was a pressure alarm. I would suction the patient and it would hopefully alleviate the alarm. So low and medium priority alarms, they're more informational. When you get a high priority alarm though, it's five tones that are continuously sounding. It will not shut up. This will turn red. Um, so if you get a, a high priority alarm, please go in and check on that patient. Um, there's a good likelihood that the patient's not getting any oxygen or any ventilation. So the most common high priority alarm that you're gonna see is a circuit disconnect alarm. So I'm gonna pretend that the, the patient popped off of their trach, their airway, and you will get a pretty instant high priority alarm. Okay. So it's these five tones that keep repeating. It'll flash red here. It's even gonna get louder as time goes on as well. So that's a high priority alarm. Anybody that hears that that's walking down the hall should go in there and check on this patient. Okay. So it's the high priority alarm. It'll tell you here um, that uh, what the problem is. You can open that up. You heard it just get louder. Okay. And so when I start ventilating, or hook the patient back up and they're starting to ventilate again, it will go ahead and uh, resolve the alarm. Okay? Now it's still gonna show that an alarm occurred here, but it's no longer an active alarm. Okay? It just meant, oh, an alarm did occur. There's an alarm reset right down here I can hit. Okay? Normally this will be clear and not showing yellow. It's showing yellow here because I don't have an air supply hooked up in here. Uh, normally you wouldn't see this at all unless there was an alarm situation that had occurred. Okay, but that's the number one common um, common vent alarm that you would hear would be that uh, circuit disconnect. It's an immediate high priority alarm that please go in there and check the patient. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for alarm situations, I was mentioning that peak pressure. So if that peak pressure goes high enough, um, it will start alarming and it will progress into a low to a medium and then even to a high priority alarm just because it's taking too much pressure 
to ventilate the patient. And so again, that's the most common thing you'll do is suction. Okay. So let's talk about suctioning real quick. It's um, with our inline suction catheter. Okay, this one happens to be for an endotracheal tube. Your suction catheters on tregs are gonna be only about this long. Okay, but the, the function's the same. Um, there's two buttons you should be aware of um, when you get ready to suction a patient. You should be able to hit the alarm silence button, lower right hand corner. That silences the alarm for two minutes. And that way it's not alarming just while you're suctioning and, and your friends don't have to come see what's, what's going on just because you're suctioning the patient. Because the vent will alarm when you're suctioning unless you get that alarm silence. The other thing that you want to hit is this 100% O2 button right here. Um, that helps pre-oxygenate before you get ready to suction and may ward off problems that you would get into when, when you suction, such as you could vagal stimulate them, okay? And uh, so you get a vagal response. Um, they may be uh, very sensitive with their oxygen needs and just the act of suctioning could lower their sats quite a bit. It takes them a while to come back up. Um, arrhythmias, so there's several things that suctioning could, could cause. Pre-oxygenating with 100% first could alleviate some of those problems. Okay, so if I saw high peak pressure and they were coughing and you could maybe even see secretions up here in the airway, I would go ahead and hit the alarm silence and the 100% O2 and then get ready to suction. So to suction, you'll turn the little valve here it should be turned off to where you can't press it. You'll turn it to where it can depress. And then as you go down the suction, you'll introduce the catheter, you'll hit the, the resistance there at the carina, back up just a little bit, and then suction, you press the, the button on the way out. Okay. You can do that for up to about 10 seconds down in the airway. And if you need to, you can go ahead and suction again. You know, watch your monitor, make sure the patient's tolerating it okay. But you can suction two, three, four times, as many times as you need to clear that, that secretions. And hopefully you would see your peak pressure drop back down to where it has been. Okay. So about the suction catheter, um, there's a black line right here at the green, okay? So when you insert the catheter, you'll see that black line right here. As you're withdrawing it, make sure that you withdraw the catheter all the way. You wanna see that black line here again, okay? So that's meaning you've withdrawn it all the way versus leaving it down just a little bit and you've, you've actually caused a little bit of an airway obstruction simply because you haven't moved the catheter all the way back out. So make sure the black line is here and you withdraw the catheter all the way. So um, after you've suctioned, you can turn the, the valve back off and just leave this there on the patient um, until you need it again. Yeah. Okay. Um, one other mode and then some emergency things and we'll be done. So this is the assist control mode. This is when we're actively ventilating the patient. There's another common mode that you would see where it's a spontaneous mode. The patient's breathing on their own and we're just giving them just a little bit of support. Okay, it's called spontaneous pressure support mode. Okay, so I put it on the spontaneous mode and if you notice, there's no set rate there. There's no tidal volume there. Uh, so the patient's totally doing this on their own. All we're giving is some pressure to overcome all this tubing. Uh, we're giving them oxygen and PEEP still. And so it's called pressure support. And to give this in report, you would say, oh, they're on pressure support of 10, PEEP of five, and 100%. Okay, which normally that would be down, you know, 30, 40, 50%. And we shouldn't be on pressure support at 100%, but this is just a demonstration. Mm -hmm. So if the patient was to stop ventilating, which I'm gonna simulate here, the ventilator will kick in and back up ventilate the patient. Okay? So the reason I'm talking about that is if you see an alarm situation come up that says apnea ventilation, 
call your RT because this mode is no longer going to be adequate for the patient. We're going to have to switch it back to the other mode. So there's apnea ventilation in progress. It'll be a medium priority alarm and then it'll progress to a high priority alarm too. But it's going to ventilate the patient because we have a backup mode set.